Welcome to today's 3D print. I have an Amazon Prime credit card and I use it for business. And um, I get 5% back on anything I buy on Amazon. And of course, I buy a lot on Amazon. <laughs> um, so I finally got enough. Uh, I got about 160 bucks in rewards points. And I also got a $50 paver card for the paper app that I run. So I bought this. An Ender 2 from Hicktop. We are going to build it today. Um, I'm hoping this will be a really nice nose cone machine. Although, I don't think this is quite the printer I thought it was. Uh, I was expecting a little tiny printer, but this is actually um, got a pretty big build volume. Um, 6 inches by 6 inches by 8 inches. Well, just less than that. 5.9 by 5.9 by 7.8. basically mini i3 but it's one of those um, um, single post cantilever printers so let's tear into it I believe this will be my first time assembling a printer I don't know how assembled this is or how unassembled it is we're gonna find out alrighty looks like parts list bottom T rods stepper motors Looks like actually it looks like it's largely assembled. Looks like a lot of it. It's, it's like a lot of these other. Yeah, I got a print getting ready to start off on here. Okay, your typical SD card tools. Ah, it comes with the nippers. I like it when it comes with the nippers. The nippers are handy. Side bracing, spool holder. Printed uh, blown blow molding spool holder. Ha, it says hick top. That's kind of cool, actually. Be proud of your brand. Okay. After I get everything out of here, we'll go through what it all is. And this is I've never had one of these printers before, so this will be a new experience for me as well as for you. Power cord. I'm guessing that is. Oh, that's the Y carriage plate. Little itty bitty thing. And it is using V slot rails with the proper wheels. That's actually pretty cool. So I got pretty good hopes for this thing. That would be Z. And this would likely be Y. Lower the temperature. I haven't readjusted this G code for the new amazing 195 degree temperature that works so well. Oh, looks like the splooge already came off. Punch in the filament. There we go. Looking good. Uh oh, that's not looking good. sitting level there. I'm going to pause you for a minute. Alrighty, got that going, so now I can ignore that. Power supply. That would be the extruder assembly with the x-axis motor. Cool. So this is basically a, a assemblable kit. Any of these eccentric? I don't think so. At least I don't see any. Oh wait a minute, that must have a flat. Is that a flat? No. I don't know if any of these are eccentric. The, the single arm, maybe they don't have to be. I don't know. I am in new territory. This, I'm guessing, is the base of the unit. 
Ooh, this is tiny. Oh, I'm gonna like this. See, I'm looking for a real tiny printer that'll do my nose cones, my centering rings. That doesn't take up a lot of space. So I can fit a whole bunch of them in a small space, especially if they're cheap. Nice little heated bed. Their version of some sort of build surface. an interesting way to transport the threaded rod. I actually like that. They have it inside this tube and this tube was stuck inside of the rail. Which would be a pretty damned effective way of protecting lead screw because if you bend the rail, the least of your problems is your lead screw. <laughs> Alrighty. Oh, a little bit in here. Limit switch. Yep. Alright, anything else? Yep, another limit switch most likely. Yep. I don't see anything else in here. And nice compact shipping too. Comes in this nice little compact box. That's pretty darn cool. And this can go in the box pile. Big pile of boxes over there. <laughs> until I get them recycled. Okay. So the... This is the actual printer base. Oh, the base is acrylic. Interesting. I guess that really doesn't matter. It's just the base and it's super thick. Out of preferred metal, but if it is genuinely inadequate material for that particular usage, then I don't have a problem with it. It's silly to waste material if you don't have to. Alright. I'm going to get rid of this silly blue coloring. I don't use it. don't like it. don't care for it. Oh yeah, just bend my brand new Z-Rod. Real good job. I wonder if this is heat shrink tubing. This might actually be a big chunk of heat shrink tubing. I'll have to test that. Because if it is, that'll come in handy. And it is a proper lead screw and not threaded rod. With everything else being so nice, I would not have... Um, I would have expected it not to be junk. It would have been nice. I'm going to guess that is my x-axis tension. Idler pulley for something. Another switch. I'm going to leave these together in here since most likely they're related and that's why they're together. Okay. Two steppers. Power supply is completely irrelevant for now, so I will take it out and put it over here. As you can see, I, I got this thing running right next to us while we're building this. And um, I have it amped up. I cranked up the speed so the steppers are really chugging away. You can hear how quiet it is. So basically, this is an Ultra Mini CR10. This is, um, I believe it's made by the same company that makes the CR10. Hicktop is just an OEM for Creality products, as far as I know. Um, so this is basically all the same tech that's in a CR10, but it's an itty bitty one. It's not the CR10 Mini. That's something I would really hope I can get a hold of. Um, but um, I. This is basically all the same tech. Let us see what is in here. Sample filament. This is not white. It gets so old getting the same old white piece of filament every time. But come on, give me some color. There's a little color. As you can see, I like to print things in orange. Okay, I want to hang on to that bag just in case. So, SD card. And in 40 years, I never knew that an easy way to open a Ziploc bag is to simply twist it and the bag pops open. I never friggin' knew that. <laughs> Who 
would have guessed. Okay. Oh, looks like an actual branded Kingston 8 gigabyte card. Interesting. It is an actual branded card. It says Kingston 8 gigabyte. All the normal markings. So, get another one of these cool little readers. I, I love these little readers, they're just handy. Warranty card. Zip ties. This is the tool pouch, the tool bag. Ooh, ball and hex keys. You don't see that too often. I'll definitely keep that bag to put the tools in. That's one thing I wish other manufacturers would take a, a clue from or a hint from ANET. The idea of marking the bags with what's in them is fantastic. More manufacturers should do that. Alrighty, so you get your zip ties, you get your little nippers, and you get your standardized tool assortment. Little tiny straight screwdriver, no Phillips this time. Two wrenches and some actual long hex keys. Very nice. These are actually long handled and they're ball end. So these are actually a, a, a higher quality hex key than you normally see with these printers. So I like that. Since I'm probably going to need these to assemble this printer. The nippers I won't need. Wrenches I doubt I'll need. They're probably for the concentrics. Whatever. And these I won't need now. They'll come later. Okay. Oh, they are marked. Oh, very. The, the the bags are marked. This says Z-axis screw. This says Y limit switch. Uh, X limit switch. It does not say what this is, but it's obvious what it is. It's the belt for the bed. Um, hotbed screw kit. Sadly, it does not come with those ultra slick. Uh, missing one? Or is there three there? Ooh. Uh, there might be three there. Okay, there might be three springs there. Hotbed screws. It does not come with those really slick, flat profile screws that the CR-10 comes with. I wish it did. Uh, spare parts. So, Oh, they do it. And this one has a larger variety of spare parts. Looks like M5 and a couple different lengths of M3 plus a couple of the hammer nuts. So I won't need that, but that's nice to have. Your spool holder, your spool, and your filament holder with nuts. So that's cool. That will also come later, so I can put that over here for now. So I won't need that right now. Uh, glue stick. This would be your um, extruder um, riser assembly. To lift on the rail. Are these marked? No, they're not, but they are obvious. This one has the GT2 belt um, spindle on it, so it must be the Y axis, and this has the coupler for the lead screw, so it must be the Z axis. And that is an ABES molded part, it is not 3D printed. And the rest of it looks Okay, a plastic extruder. Very tight spring. I like that. Very, very tight. I mean, that's like, you really got to wrench that down a little bit to make that move. So that's good. It's not metal, but that's okay. It looks smaller. Well, I guess it's the same size. Definitely different teeth. It's a different drive gear than typical. Okay. Oh, that's where the lead screw goes. It's a little dipole instead of a instead of your typical round with four holes for your screws. This one has same brass, but it's only two screws, and it sits right there. And that is pretty close to the CG too. That's pretty cool. Very cool, actually. So this would be pretty well balanced as it's going up. It's not going to be trying to tip over one way. Um, all of your wires look like they are pre-connected. 
and they just come straight out. That is some badass tall standoffs in there. There's a brass standoff that goes from here to the bottom that attaches this casing to the machine. There is a single fan here that I can see. I will probably be replacing that pretty quickly. And it does, that has an acrylic part as well, just the fan guard mount. But the important bits, this is also acrylic, but again, that's just the case for the machine, so it doesn't matter. Um, the actual frame, you have a piece of rail here, and a piece of rail here, 20-20-20-40. Um, I wonder what goes on this rail. I bet you that, oh, that is how this attaches. This is going to attach to this rail here. Yep, there's the screws right through it. And they are threaded. Um, so this will attach here like this. This will slide over this assembly. And this is be your X-arm. Um, that goes up and down. Okay, That's why they have that piece of rail there. Alrighty. I do not see any instructions whatsoever. There is no manual whatsoever. So I am guessing you are meant to use the manual on the SD card. And nowhere in here does it tell me that. It is, I guess, assumed that you will know that. So nowhere in this box does it say, hey, go here to find your directions. And it does not come with any directions only a parts list which does look complete it does not say SD card has instruction manual but that's not a big deal I'm going to pause you guys for a minute while I go read this okay there's gonna be a lot of pauses in this um it actually has a rather nice video that it comes with <laughs> it's got decent music with it and apparently this guy builds the printer in 21 minutes and 55 seconds we're probably gonna take a little longer than that but that's okay alright so right off the bat as expected we have to install the extrusion. This one's a little knurled up. This one is clean. So I'm going to use this one. And the bag says Z axis screw. So it comes with the two screws that will go through the bottom plate into the extrusion. And then be I'm guessing because this is acrylic, you don't want the full load on this, um, which is for stiffness, because um, it's actually a rail going into a rail. It also comes with these hammer nut units to um, install into the rails to stiffen it up at right angles. You can see an example of one here. See how they have the two um, angle bracket pieces. They're cast aluminum and they keep it very stiff. Okay. Doesn't matter which way is forward, I doubt it. They are threading right in without resistance. That's good. This is one part you really want stiff, and I figure while I'm under here, check all the rest of these. I already got the wrench in my hands. I'm going to take a moment, double check, make sure everything's tight. I'll check the little ones later. And then, let's see what he says. <laughs>
guess it goes here. There's no other place it can go. It literally can't go anywhere else. Okay. Right angles. Both of them slide in. it up a little more. Now they turned. The hammer nut wasn't turning. I got turned. He's got those stupid lock nuts washers in there. I should remove them, but eh. I think this is overkill anyway. <clears throat> Okay, that is assembled. I'm going to pause again while I consult the video. Alrighty, our next group of parts is going to be the Y-axis motor, Y-axis limit switch, the actual Y carriage, the what they call synchronous belt or the GG2 belt, which is actually kind of interesting. It goes through the extrusion. It's pretty cool. And uh, and hot plate. So let's begin. This goes this way. This little bugger goes on here like this. Tighten that later. Um, a bed. Wow, needs no adjustment. Perfect. No wobble, no nothing. That's actually impressive. And it's crazy smooth. Oh yeah, one for the X. Oh crap. Which one's which? Or are they the same? They're the same. <laughs> Got me worried for a minute there. Alright, apparently this goes into here. Somehow. Is it that simple? Is that simple? Just wiggles in there, I guess. Okay, it just wiggles in there. It then feeds through the extrusion. Yum, 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 yum. here and 
you just gotta wiggle it around through there, that's all. Okay. That's less than intuitive, but it works. Okay. Then the big piece. Where's that big piece? That's this one, I think. Nope. Yep. Okay. Is that simple? I can't go further than that since I would be leaving the extrusion. this out a little bit. Okay. Nice and tight. Something's hitting. Make sure it's all the way over. I don't like the way that dances around. It should not do that. I mean, it's probably fine, but I don't see any way to correct it. That's a problem. There's no reason it should be doing that. It's going to tear it apart over time. trying to ride over, I don't know why. It's not this. Well, at least that way it won't tear itself apart. To is that um, the belt is trying to ride to the left on the wheel when I go this way and the result is the belt climbs up out of the v-slot you can see it here the, I come this way the belt straight but when I go this way the belt comes over here and it rides up I pick this up to raise this up a little bit so that it's not grinding away on the v-rail but it's not supposed to be doing that and I'm not sure why it is doesn't make any sense. I mean, I can keep it over there. No, it still wants to ride, so it's coming from down here. Why does it want to move over? I have 
no idea why it wants to ride over. I don't think it's going to cause me a problem, although in the long run, it might cause undue wear. But for some reason, when I go this way, the belt wants to ride to the left. It can't escape because there's capture wheels here. But um, I suspect that maybe this needs to be bent a little bit. And I don't think I can bend that. Because that's a, a pretty healthy plate there. Yeah, I'm not going to go to win that. But it keeps riding over on top of the V-rail. Again, I don't think it's going to affect the operation right now, but it might affect its longevity. So I'll have to look into that. Right now, it's not a big deal. Next up comes the heat plate. Double check the tightness of the... In fact, might as well double check the tightness of these screws, too. Nice and tight. Nice and tight from the factory, that's good. So we have the heat bed and the heat bed hardware. Oh, limit switch. Almost forgot about that. Okay. That goes down here. It just sits flush with the rear here. Boy, I do not like that. Now what hits that? Oh, the wheel. That's fine. This switch is a bit hokey. The tab just floats down. You can see that here. That's a bit hokey. See the way the tab just comes down under gravity? Um, if that ever gets underneath the wheel, it's just going to shred it. Hmm. Well, it must have gotten tweaked in shipment, but it does work, so I'll leave it. Seems to work. Okay. Belt is nice and tight. Okay. Heat bed. Three point. One, two, three. I'm very happy to see a lot of CR10 um, aspects in this printer. That makes me very happy. I suspect this is going to be a very, very good printer in the long run. It looks like I will be able to replace a couple of these wheels with something longer. It all depends on how cooperative it wants to be. There is a little bit of room there. Plenty of room out here. Although I gotta watch out for the limit switch. There might not be a lot of room here, but this one will be pretty um, adjustable. I wish they'd have made the Y plate just a tiny bit bigger. Give us just a wee bit more room. Then again, that would defeat the point. Part of the point of this printer is that it's a very small footprint. That's kind of the idea. idea behind this thing is to be very very compact Do not take up a lot of room I probably won't even need a glass plate it's so small 
I'm just going to slap a piece of um, Britain Z on here, which I already have coming in the mail. Yeah, there is no easy way to access this third one over here. That's a, that's a tough bugger to get to. Hopefully this holds its level very well. I just realized I can't tighten that up all the way yet. So I have to be able to lift this up enough to get to that. Yeah, let's hope this is uh doesn't need leveling very often. Yeah. It is a nice thick PCB plate. Really? I dropped it. I guess I can slap this on here for now. on that. I believe there is an eccentric screw that you can access through here like this. Oh yes, there it is. Not that one. Can I not get to it? the eccentric screw, but I cannot put a wrench on it, because of its position. There it goes. Ah, oh, there we go. Not a wiggle. Just took a tiny little turn. Smooth as a baby's butt. Not, no backlash at all. Nothing. Good. Very strong. That makes me happy. I was worried about that. I shouldn't have been. It's from the same people who make CR-10. <laughs> Using the same hardware. Alright, I'm going to pause you again while I consult the video for the next step, which is probably this. Okay, next up is the Z-axis. And it looks like they want me to put the Z-axis limit switch in during assembly, which kind of makes sense, actually it's going to be pretty hard to get to. I believe that's all this. Yep, the limit. So, Z axis. This is cranked down nice and tight. It is. Okay. Oh, those hammer nuts can be annoying. This literally pops right in here like this. And sits 
sits on the base. wrong size wrench <laughs> I was like what the hell's going on the nuts turning ah, wrong size wrench there we go make sure it's firmly seated down so that your Z does not wobble around which would suck he put the rod in first I didn't like that I'm just not that comfortable doing that there we go Gotta make sure those hammers turn. Okay. I really like these longer, higher quality wrenches. Uh, please keep doing that, guys. Yep, that's my Z limit switch right there. Ah, okay. One goes into the rail. So this is interesting. I was wondering why he installed the third nut, and that's because. Oh, this is plastic as well. The limit switch is, but it is um, ABS molded plastic, not printed. I'd be fine with it being printed. Again, the limit switch plate is a non load-bearing object so it really doesn't matter but this screw goes into the extrusion and it is adjustable look at that you get that much movement so you can fully adjust this in fact if you ignore this screw altogether this is infinitely adjustable let's attach the wire as they do in the video. There we go. I'm recording. Okay. I thought I wasn't recording for a moment. I was going to have to start over, but nope, I was recording. Okay. Come on, you bugger. bottom screw goes into the extrusion and then these two here this allows this to be adjusted to some extent Hang on. I'll show you so this can actually move up and down by about two millimeters that's pretty cool leave that not super tight since I will probably have to adjust that once I get my print and Z surface on here. Alrighty, I'm, I guess I might as well attach these. Why? Or, oh, Y limit, okay. I might as well attach your Z motor wire here. And, oh, that's interesting. Oh, there is enough, okay. So this will be your Z motor right here. Or your Y motor, sorry. 
this can come underneath to the Y limit switch. Not bad. I like these flat ribbon cables. They're nice and neat. They, they're the correct length, so they tend to stay put. Alrighty, I believe we'll be getting to the gantry next. I will be right back after watching the video. Okay, next up is to build the X gantry. And one thing I was curious about, and I saw the guy in the video looking at it closely, but I couldn't figure out what he was doing. What's that cut out for? There's a little cut out right there. Well, that's it, simple. This just literally attaches here with the hammer nuts. And the problem is, there's a bolt here for one of the wheels, for the V-slot wheels. Well, that cutout's for the wheel, for that nut. So it sits on top of that so it doesn't push it out. Pretty cool. Novel solution, it works. get these bits out. I don't know why they didn't put all four standoffs on. For some reason they left one standoff for me to put on, but it just screws on. I mean, why not include all four already on there? I'm not sure why they did that. is your limit switch. It sits on here like that. This is another acrylic part, but a uh, plastic part actually. No, is that acrylic? I can't tell if it's acrylic or plastic. I think it's acrylic. But again, it's just the limit switch, so it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Smaller. This one. screws for the limit switch were a little loose if I'm tightening them up. Another reason you should check all the screws. Just check everything while you're here. Ah, see, that one was a bit loose. Not much, but enough that I want to correct it. Now, these are pass-throughs. Smaller. There's holes in the metal plates over here so you can loosen the hammer nuts. Then you slide this over top. And it sits inside that cavity for that screw. Ah, just long enough. That's why they included long ones, because there's a lot of places where you got to reach. Okay. I don't like the way that one was popping out, but it's tight. Alright, limit switch. Then comes the belt drive. gather I need to go this way first because 
like the CR10 and ANET and whatnot, it rides on top of the belt. Come on, go the hell below the extrusion. Thank you. So you have to feed this over top like that. There we go. No play there either. That's good. What am I hitting? Oh, the belt. Okay, that's got to come out of there. That fits into here. And this fits into here. Much easier to install than the Y carriage plate. Okay. And then this goes on the back. There we go. Make sure that hammer not turned. That looks nice. That rides nice. This concentric is already perfectly tuned. And the three wheels are centered. So you have the two and one in the center here. So they offset the print head in order to center that wheel. Very good. So you don't have the bounce that the E10 has. Hey, that's the quality difference between the ANET E10 and the Creality. I mean, in the beginning it doesn't make much of a difference, and it doesn't really affect the print quality at all, but it affects the usability. It's easier for the end user to install when it's done correctly, because there's no adjustment necessary. It's perfect. I don't have to fight with the hot end. I mean, that's just as tight as this, but that was a pain in the ass to do. This was a cakewalk. <laughs> okay, and then the Bowden tube. Oh, that came out. That was supposed to be already installed. It's okay, easy enough to install. It just looks like it self threads into the plastic. So, this is the Bowden connector. It was attached to the end of the Bowden tube, and this threads into the plastic here. Easy peasy, yummy squeezy. I do believe that is all that goes. I don't want to strip it. I think that's all it's going to go. already zip tied together. Okay. That slips into place. Rod slips into place. It looks like the rod is left loose on this. Okay. This is heat bed. Make sure that goes underneath everything. Okay. These are the stepper motor connections and then this one here. I'm not thrilled about how this goes in here. I mean, it works fine, but I don't 
like the idea of it being pretty close to that gear drive here, although it looks like it'll stay out of the way. I'd have liked to have seen a little clip here to hold that there so it can't move over into that, but I don't think it'll do that. Okay, that is more than enough to get you all the way to the top of your print volume with a little slack left over, which is very nice. Very, very nice. That is a theoretical max right there, although I doubt you could actually reach that. It might. With a very small modification, I might be able to get there. Would you look at that? Theoretically, this thing has a 9 inch height possibility. Or roughly, it could get close to 230 millimeters. I mean, it's not impossible. Design this right up here, and it might be possible because it got, it's got plenty of reach. And that's right at the top of the threaded rod. And I mean right there at the top. 230, 235 millimeters is theoretically possible. That's pretty cool, actually. I see no wobble or wiggle whatsoever. This is solid. It no play. It will f they did a really good job on this. Wow. Let me consult the video, but I believe... Actually, I don't even need the video for this. I mean, this just... All we're doing is installing this. This gets installed directly on top, and I do not think that will interfere. So I do believe we can go that high if we want to. This is so rigid, you shouldn't have a problem with mounting the spool on top of the printer. It's, it's a stupid rigid design. It's like stupidly strong. So you can get away with that. Believe it or not, I like the, the branding. As long as it's in good taste, the branding's cool. This is a very, very easy assembly. This is not, I would not call this a kit. This is an, an assembly. You're you are not building it, you're assembling it. it it's, it's ready to run, basically. You just gotta put the pieces together. Very, very little work. I would say somebody reasonably competent can do this in well under an hour, probably 40, 50 minutes, take your time. Um, basically, call an hour. You're gonna spend 20 minutes watching the video and then you're gonna throw it together. <laughs> the video that comes with it, not my video. My video is going to be quite a bit longer than 20 minutes. Very nice. I am going to have the spool come out the back. Which is kind of a pity, because that's going to shorten the length of the spool. So I'm probably going to have to print a new spool for this. Because of the extrusion going out that way. Would you knock it off? What the hell? Just thread on there. Yeah, that, that knocks out a lot of your spool length there. Going out the back like this. Uh, I might not be able to do that. That spool might actually hit. get something. Ah, wait a minute. I got some new stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah, Agua Marine or something like that. I don't remember what the name is. Um, Aubergine. It's a really nice deep purple. This is Zyro filament. I really like their filament. 
It's a little finicky. Sometimes you gotta play with it to get that first little extrusion to stick. But after that, it's fine, no problem. Comes with a Mylar bag to reseal the filament when you're done with it. And it is backpacked. And I love the clear holes. Not only can you see the color, but you can very clearly see exactly how much you have on there. Will this fit? Yes, it does. Plenty of room. Oh, that's perfect. No problem. Oh, that's beautiful. Filament went in without much. Oh, there is something wrong with that Bowden tube. Is that or something wrong with this filament? Let me clip a little more off. There it goes. It might have just been a kink in my filament. It was resisting a little bit. But it wasn't resisting anymore. Okay. This is very cool. I'm really digging this. And they have a, a pretty slick little... By the way, the memory card reader died, I believe. I mean, they are cheap. They're about 60 cents a pop from China. I think it died. I was watching the video and it was not happy. There we go. Where does power go? Oh, right here on the side. Stick that power brick. There it is. Is this an auto switching? Yes, it is. This is an auto switching 12 and a half amp, 12 volt, 100, 240 volt power supply. So it auto switches. You don't have to do a thing. Nice thing is, that means I. In theory, I should be able to run this in the car. You know, run it on the field off the solar panel or something like that. Uh, well, if I'm doing PLA, I don't need the heat bed. So this might run off of a solar bank if you have a battery to help it. Seems like, oh, I like the C5 cable. I like those cables. They just seem nicer. Uh, there is an indicator light. It is blue. I will assume that means good to go. It's a little on the short side, but it's not bad. Obviously, you'll have this station somewhere where that won't be an issue. Can I get to the floor? Yes, it will reach the floor. Alrighty. Let me turn this so you guys can see this. The cool thing is, this thing is ultra tiny. Look how little space this consumes. I mean, what are we talking about here? We are talking a footprint of approximately... Uh, actually, it's about the same as the one house. You're looking at about 35, 40 centimeters. But then your front to back is about 40 centimeters. So you're looking about 40 by 40 centimeters, and everything else is in height. So... The footprint of the base unit of an E10 or a Wanha without the control box, meaning everything fits inside that footprint. I added a little extra for the cable, um, since you have to make space for that. I wish the cable was in the back, because then you'd have smooth sides. All right, let's turn it on. There is a screen, and it is a graphic screen. It's actually a really nice screen. Wow, let me show you guys this. I'll pop this out real quick so you guys can see this. It's gonna be hard to see on air goes. It's actually a really nice screen. That fan does need to be replaced. It's not bad as far as fans go. I've seen much, much worse. <laughs> but um, I am gonna to wanna to replace that. Actually, a lot of it's coming from that. So 
I'll replace that fan. Um, I did check this already. Yep, that's tight. I know these are known for having loose shrouds that make noise, and they are tight. Not these, but like the CR10. Same basic design here. Matter of fact, I believe it's the exact same hot end. So this should have identical quality. Is that a coated? No. Um, it has the same goofy design where the fan blows on the hot end as well as the um, the heat break, heat sink inside. But this one is wrapped in insulation, so it should be less of a problem. Um, all right, let's home it. Looks like it works just like any other one works. Okay, control, motion. Ah, they already turned acceleration down to 500. I will turn jerk down to 10 like I usually do. I like the fact that they've already got the um, acceleration turned down. That's good. Looks like it's 93 steps they have it set for. Looks like I can't save it. They program for a max temperature of 250. So we're going to turn the fan speed down. I think I usually like it around 200. Nozzle temperature 195. Bed. Eh, I guess 45 is fine. Okay, main, prepare, auto home, X works, Y works, and Z works. I will want to make a, a bracket for the front here to grab this wire and hold it right across the front of the printer like this as a strain relief for this plug. I really do wish that plug was in the back. That would have been nice. I would have liked that plug in the back with a little hold down. Just sticking out the side here wastefully takes up space, but also um, it's going to be prone to getting bumped into, so you're going to want to be careful with that. I'm probably being overly paranoid. It's a pretty big barrel plug, but still, be careful. Okay. Oh, wow. It's got a lot of playroom in there. That's nice. Of course, I can't do anything unless I disable the steppers because you cannot reach this adjustment. You just can't. Very bad positioning, and I don't think there's anything I can do to fix that either. Boy, there is no give in your height here. You are right at the limits of your, your bed screws. So this would do very well to add the ability to compensate for that. Meaning what it needs is a piece of glass. Hmm. Or like my printing Z. 
will probably be thick enough to compensate for that. Now, they actually suggest that it feels like it's touching. It is. And the other problem is you cannot live adjust this because there's no way you're going to be able to reach this bed screw. You know, nope, that won't work either. Hmm. <laughs> it might actually be worth, unless this holds its level very well, it might be worth making a bracket to attach to the Y plate that comes out to here with a second wheel that has a belt attached to the other wheel so that you can adjust it from out here. We'll see. Maybe it's not necessary. Uh, they do suggest using the glue stick, so we will do exactly that. And let's print what's on the card. I already cheated. It's a one of those four leaf clover little shot glasses. Bed is heating. I love that it's got the tune screen so I can come in here and make my adjustments. It's wonderful. Nozzle is heating pretty fast too. Bed's at 30. Nozzle's jumping three or four degrees per second. That's pretty good. It's heating fast. So it's got a, it seemed to have a strong heater cartridge in there. Even with that fan blowing all over it. Bed is very slow to heat. 35 degrees. The nozzle's going to reach temp long before the bed does. It would seem the bed is actually bigger than the maximum print volume. Huh. Well, at least in one direction. Because this cannot go far enough to reach the edge. I hope I didn't build it wrong. No, the bed is bigger than the rated print volume. So there is a little give there. Your, um, you can actually build slightly bigger than this is rated for. It's rated for, I believe, 150 millimeters, but you can easily do the full 165 millimeters on X. So I would say the um, it's um, 150 by 160, and I bet you I can get nine inches out of it too. Why are these bulbs flickering? Weird. They're brand new. I literally just bought them today to give you guys more light. And they be already flickering? Seriously? 44 degrees in the bed, steady at 195 on the nozzle. Should begin printing. Oh, its target is 50. I'm going to turn down the speed so that I can see what it's doing. 40%. What the hell? Nose cone's looking good. It's going to be a 275 millimeter tall nose cone. Come on, very slow bed. You would have a tough time doing ABS on this. I don't even know if it's possible. But that's okay, that's not what this machine's for. Now 
Now I see why they typically set it to... Oh. There is... No parts cooling fan. I guess it depends on the loose air coming off of this. For part cooling, that kind of sucks. Because for a PLA only machine, you need part cooling. No, 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 no. We're going to stick at 195. Looks like it's pre programmed for 210. But I just discovered today, thanks to Marion Cravens, that. Lower temperature works a hell of a lot better. I was about to pause you guys until it reached the temp, but it's, it's there. Boy, big swing. It swung down to 189, 190 before it turned back on and came back up. That's some big temperature swings. goes I need some light whoa why is it printing all the way to the hell over there Let's do a little stutter. It was trying to print all the way over there. Looks like they included a G-code file from a different printer. <laughs> Dummies. There we go. Sticking good. Let's crank it up. 150%. Screw it. Balls out. Yeah, it's handling it. Ah, weird G code file. Quiet. Even the stock fans are pretty damn quiet. This thing is almost as quiet as the E10. Oh, this is cool. Not sure how well it's going to do without a cooling fan. <laughs> I wonder if it's wired for one and I can add it. Or if it's not even wired for it. Let's go a little faster. I don't feel any jerk or anything. I think this can handle it. I love this little tiny screen. It's very effective. You don't need a huge screen. This black and white screen instead of the blue. Very nice. I think we are under extruding. Big time. It's like it's not filling the space properly. Yeah, I suspect the um, it includes the STL file on the card as well. 
I suspect they goofed up and put the G-code file for a different printer on here because it tried to print off the bed. It looks like it tried to print on a um, the center of a 200 by 200 bed or a 220 by 220 bed, which would put it right about where it was. Actually, no. It looks like it was trying to print on a, almost on a, a bed like this, a 220 by 270. Either way, it was very wrong. So I'm going to stop this video. We are done building the um, pick top um, Ender 2. It went together flawlessly. I had absolutely zero issues to write home about. The only thing I don't like is the um, inability to live level, although I got it pretty good. Um, the inability to live level because you cannot reach this nut right here. It's right there. So you can't reach that while it's printing. No way. Um, and of course, it's three points, so that becomes part of the plane. Um, wiring is great. Uh, I love the spool holder. I love the stiffness. I got this thing going at 200% of whatever that G code is programmed for. I want to say it's going at 60 millimeters a second. Um, at a rough guess, it's not jittering. It's not shaking the table. It's handling the filament fine. I think it's under extruding a tiny bit, but I think that's because this G-code file wasn't made for this printer, so I am going to fab up a profile and simplify 3D and make up my own profile for it, but this is cool. I like this unit a lot. Um, if it prints okay without a cooling fan, I'm worried about the lack of a cooling fan. Um, we'll see. More to come.